Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. We're going to be taking a look at some performance metrics as well as the bandwidth and throughput on all the I.O. that we have available to us. While I don't have the video present for this, I have recorded a video and it's B-roll for my full review. I can confirm that the HDMI port is 1.4 here, so you're limited to 4K at 30 hertz. Uh, thankfully, on Type-C, if you went DisplayPort out, you will have 4K at 60 hertz, so you can do full 4K from Type-C to DisplayPort. Additionally, uh, any type of hub does work on this, so that is nice as well. My hub has HDMI out on this Type-C hub, so again, you're going to be limited to HDMI 1.4 on most all hubs that you get. Uh, so you'll be limited to 4K30 if you're doing Type-C to HDMI. That's just so you know that. Uh, all of these USB all of these USB ports, the USB-A ports that are 3.0, uh, they operate at full bandwidth. Additionally, each one of these can output full power. So that's really cool. These will power, um, they powered my 2.5 inch SSD by itself and went uh, full full bandwidth. I'll be able to show you those results in a little bit. The RJ45 port will saturate gigabit, so you'll be at 110 megabytes a second through this port right here. MicroSD seems to be limited to 85 megabytes a second, which is pretty standard for GPD types of products. Regarding the SOC, um, there are some times that I mentioned this and um, people, People's perceptions of Intel's parts. Intel plays very fast and loose with the Celeron and Pentium moniker. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Celeron doesn't necessarily mean bad, and Pentium doesn't necessarily mean good. Um, they, Intel does make an Intel Celeron core part. It's the Intel uh, 3965Y. It is a it is a Core M3 part. It's just, it just doesn't have any turbo boost. It's at 1.5 gigahertz. I would prefer that chip in most anything because I just don't really like Atom. Having said that, this is clearly a better chip than the 8750, but it is still very much an Atom chip, and you should anticipate performance more in line with the GPD Win 1, especially because we're running um, not as best we could possibly be on this platform. So now while the uh, Celeron N4100 has a slower, uh, lower top frequency, it does have double the amount of L2 cache, which is rather huge. And that's where we're getting a lot of our IPC gain. Um, not without the, we're going to, you spend more power to reach that frequency. So it's not free. While the bigger benefit is DDR4 support, this platform seems to only use 2133 megahertz instead of 2400 megahertz, which is unfor uh, unfortunate. Uh, additionally, because it's only single channel. So you're not going to have any benefit for the GPU. That's not to say that it's exactly needed because we are running four less execution uh, units over the 8750, but we are running 100 megahertz faster on each one of those EUs. Um, basically, what you wind up getting is when you take a, a deeper look at it, the GPD Win actually does beat GPU performance on this platform, and that's largely because of single channel memory as well as these uh, fewer execution units. Um, but overall, because we have around a 30% boost, 35% uh, boost and CPU single threaded scores that were able to easily beat the best GPD win one score. Um, but largely everything is very much the same for the N4100 platform when compared to the 8750 Atom. There are, they have the same SIMD ex uh, extensions. The only other thing that you really got are some additional features. Uh, those are like uh, IOMMU support. So for uh, VTD, uh, virtualization, and if you wanted to send any of your hardware stuff straight through to your virtual machine, like the uh, integrated GPU, you have that ability within the N4100. So there are feature flags that are extended for the N4100 platform. You should just think of it as a super, uh, a super Atom chip. So this is the GPD Pocket, and this is the best um, score I found uh, for Geekbench 4. Uh, funnily enough, it was actually done yesterday. So you can see our single threaded score right here is 1214. And if we look at my score that I recorded on here, we're looking at 1715. So it's a significantly better single threaded score. Um, and this will help largely for most all tasks. Um, but it's not going to, you're not going to, there's nothing any super appreciable about it. The good thing about N4100, the thing that I don't mind as much is if an N4100 platform is as inexpensive as the 8750, then I'm okay with it. But if you're going to be paying top dollar for Atom 
kit, I would rather just do the Celer the Celeron 3965Y, which is a Core M architecture. It just doesn't have a turbo boost. Uh, that is far better in terms of efficiency per watt for you know performance. Um, so really, I just I hope that obviously this device is three hundred dollars. So hopefully you know GPD is getting similar pricing for this chip as they did for the GPD Win One. But that's just something that I wanted to show you, and we can go over that in a second. So that was the Geekbench score. This is a CloudGate score, and this is something that is really kind of f tuned for these devices. And uh, you can see I didn't have to do anything. This is just my score without really tweaking much. Unfortunately, because we only have single-channel memory on the DDR3, we're not going to really be pushing anything further on the GPU. In fact, if we take a look at some um, bigger... Let's, let me go ahead and not jump through these real quick. Let me get up the actual uh, slide. All right, there we go. So this is GPD Win 1 score, and this is the N4100. Now you can see that clearly the N4100 has beaten this score, and this GPD Win 1 score is the best GPD Win 1 score it possible, attainable. But if we look here in the graphics score, we actually see that the GPD Win 1 is, is winning. Uh, and that has to do with having more execution units, also probably letting that TDP fly, um, so just using and gobbling up as much energy as possible. Obviously, the CPU with that double the L2 cache is what's really going to help benefit this, as well as DDR4. The lower latency is going to be helping CPU tests as well. So that's the other thing. So let's go ahead and I'll jump right in. So this is the throughput on the left USB, and you can see that we are getting full USB 3. Now, this is just a limitation of my SSD, um, but we are way past USB 2, so we're way, well into USB 3 territory here. Uh, let's go out of here. This is this is the SSD itself. This is the a buy one SSD that comes in here. So this is the M2 SATA port, and you can look at those read speeds. This is perfect. So I'm th thankfully we're getting this that this score alone, even though the SSD itself may not be the best, we do have full throughput on uh, that 6G SATA slot. So that is nice to see. We have the mid USB port one. This is right here, and again same throughput as the others. So all of these USB 3 ports are perfectly fine. We'll go ahead and take a look at the throughput for the micro SD. And this again is limited to 85 megabytes a second. So um, don't enter, even if you have the best micro SD available, don't anticipate going over 85 megabytes a second. That is what you're going to be limited to. Um, that is that. We can go ahead and take a look at Dolphin. Now, remember, this, while we do have better single threaded scores and single threaded performance, um, which is really one of the reasons why we don't really get the best Dolphin emulation. Let me go ahead and load this up. If we just take a look at our frame rate up here, it's not the best. It is clearly better than the GPD Win 1, but it is... You'll be able to play some Dolphin games like Paper Mario, uh, most likely uh, Wind Waker. Excuse me. But for... I don't want to say, I, I hesitate to say that you'll be able to play anything because you can, even if you see right here, it's uh, obviously we're already down to like 30 ish FPS. And the reason why I like using Metroid Prime is because it wants to hit that 60 uh, FPS target, which is difficult to hit. And there's a lot of things going on on the screen, especially in this intro. And we can. Like just charging this up. So you can see that there is a lot of lag and stutter. And it's not going to be the most ideal situation for playing most games. Now, if we wanted to compare it to the GPD Win 1, um, you should anticipate very slightly better performance. Um, and in those in those areas, specifically ones where you weren't GPU bound, specifically where we were CPU bound. Um, and that's where you're going to get largely the biggest performance out of it. So a lot of emulation tasks will benefit from this. Um, will this be something that you want to use? Like, um, now, is this something that you kind of would want to even entertain? Uh, I don't know. Some people seem to think that this is okay. Um, this is kind of big. I would rather just use a Windows tablet, especially a 7Y30 tablet, because you can get a $300 7Y30 tablet, except it'd be rather large. Um, 
So there is this method for playing games on it. Would that be recommended? Eh. So that's it. That's pretty much the wrap up on the performance of this. It's not bad. The one benefit of having uh, four physical cores as opposed to two cores and two uh, hyper threaded cores, SM SMT, the, the real benefit is if you wanted to virtualize some of these. Now that can be marginalized because you don't have a tremendous amount of memory on here. So you're going to be potentially just using a lot of legacy types of VMs, things that can take up very, very little RAM. Um, but I think of this device as an atom based netbook. Don't expect a world of anything coming out of this. There are very specific games that you'll be able to play on Dolphin. Lots of games underneath that should work just fine. I can demo those as well. But again, there's no real real nice input for this. Anywho, uh, I'm going to be following up this. I have a new uh, M2 slot that I'll be putting in here. We're going to be loading up Linux and doing some tests on that, and we'll show off what's available there. As always, thank you very much for your time, and thanks for watching. A full review for this will be due in about a week and a half. Thank you.